Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math P4, Variant 3, May June 2019. Let's get started. Here is part of a train timetable for a journey from London to Marseille. All times given are in local time. The local time in Marseille is one hour ahead of the local time in London. Work out the total journey time from London to Marseille. Give your answer in hours and minutes. To get the time duration for the journey, we subtract the departure time in London from the arrival time in Marseille. Note that when it's 14.46 in Marseille, the local time in London is 13.46. In the minutes column, when we subtract 19 from 46, we get 27. And in the hour column, when we subtract 7 from 13, we get 6. And so the time duration is 6 hours 27 minutes. The distance from London to Ashford is 90 kilometers. The local time in London is the same as the local time in Ashford. Work out the average speed in kilometers per hour of the train between London and Ashford. The speed will be the distance traveled by the train divided by the time taken. We've been given the distance as 90 kilometers. The local time in Ashford and the local time in London are the same. So the time duration will be 7.55 minus 719. In the minutes column, when we subtract 19 from 55, we get 36. And in the hour column, when we subtract 7 from 7, we get 0. And so the time duration is 36 minutes. To convert 36 minutes to hours, we divide by 16. When we type this into the calculator, we get 150 kilometers per hour. During the journey, the train takes 35 seconds to completely cross a bridge. The average speed of the train during this crossing is 90 kilometers per hour. The length of the train is 95 meters. Calculate the length in meters of this bridge. The distance traveled by the train will be its speed times the time duration. From the illustration, we see that for the train to completely cross the bridge, it travels a total of LB plus 95 meters, where LB is the length of the bridge. The train speed is 90 kilometers per hour and the time duration it took to completely cross the bridge is 35 seconds. To convert 90 kilometers to meters, we multiply by 1000. One hour is 3600 seconds. And so the seconds cancel out. When we type this into the calculator, we get 875 meters. From here, we subtract 95 from both sides of the equation. This gives us 780 meters. The fares for the train journey are shown in the table below. For the standard fare, write the ratio adult fare is to child fare in its simplest form. The standard adult fare is to the standard children fare would be $84 is to $60. The HCF for 84 and 60 is 12. 12 goes into 84 7 times and 12 goes into 60 5 times. And so our final answer here is 7 is to 5. For an adult, Find the percentage increase in the cost of the standard fare to the premier fare. This would be equal to the adult premier fare, which is $140, minus the adult standard fare, which is $84, divided by the adult standard fare times 100%. When we type this into the calculator, we get 66.7%, rounded to three significant figures. For one journey from London to Marseille, the ratio number of adults is to number of children equals 11 is to 2. There were 220 adults in total on this journey. All of the children and 70% of the adults paid the standard fare. 
The remaining adults paid the premium fare. Calculate the total of the fares paid by the adults and the children. First, let's find the number of children on this journey. The ratio has been given as 11 is to 2. We know the number of adults is 220, and so we represent the number of children with x. When we cross multiply and make x the subject, this is what we have, which is equal to 40. The number of adults who paid the standard fare is 70% of 220, which is 154. When we subtract 154 from 220, we get the number of adults who paid the premium fare, and that is 66. All the children paid the standard fare, and so the total cost will be 40 times $60 plus 154 times $84 plus 66 times $140, which is equal to $24,576. There were 3.08 times 10 raised to the power 5 passengers that made this journey in 2018. This was a 12% decrease in the number of passengers that made this journey in 2017. Find the number of passengers that made this journey in 2017. Give your answer in standard form. We assume the initial number of passengers, which is the number in 2017, is 100%. And so when we subtract 12% from 100%, we get 88%. This means 88% of the number of passengers in 2017 equals 3.08 times 10 raised to the power 5. This gives us the number of passengers in 2017 as 350,000. To write this number in standard form, remove the decimal point at the end of the number to a position after the first non-zero digit, which is 3. This gives us 3.5. Since we moved 5 units to the left, we multiply 3.5 by 10 raised to the power 5. Solve 5x minus 17 equals 7x plus 3. When we group like terms, this is what we have. 7x minus 5x is 2x and minus 17 minus 3 is minus 20. When we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals negative 10. Find the integer values of n that satisfy this inequality. 4n is greater than negative 7 and less than and equal to 8. When we divide through the inequality by 4, negative 7 over 4 is negative 1.75. 4n divided by 4 is n and 8 divided by 4 is 2. Therefore, the integer values of n in this range are negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Simplify a raised to the power 3 times a raised to the power 6. Based on the loss of indices, since the bases are equal, we add the powers. This gives us a raised to the power 3 plus 6. 3 plus 6 is 9 and so the final answer is a raised to the power 9. Simplify 5xy squared all raised to the power 3. By applying the loss of indices, we can rewrite this as 5 cubed times x cubed times y squared all cubed. 5 cubed is 125 and the powers of y multiplies and so y raised to the power 2 times 3 is y raised to the power 6. And so our final answer is 125 x cubed times y raised to the power 6. Simplify. 27x raised to the power 12 over 64y cubed all raised to the power negative 1 over 3. By applying the loss of indices, we can rewrite the given expression as this. 27 raised to the power negative 1 over 3 is 1 over 3. The powers of x multiply and so x raised to the power 12 times negative 1 over 3 is x raised to the power negative 4. 
64 raised to the power negative 1 over 3 is 1 over 4. The powers of y multiply and so y raised to the power 3 times negative 1 over 3 is y raised to the power negative 1. 1 over 3 divided by 1 over 4 is 4 over 3. x raised to the power negative 4 is the same as 1 over x raised to the power 4 and 1 over y raised to the power negative 1 is the same as y. And so our final answer is 4y over 3x raised to the power 4. On the grid, draw the image of triangle A after a translation by the vector negative 3, 2. For this translation, the translation vector dictates that we move each of the vertices of triangle A 3 units to the left and 2 units upwards. On the diagram, the movement for point B has been shown. After repeating the same process for points A and C as well, we are able to map out the translated image of triangle A. Draw the image of triangle A after a reflection in the line y equals x. First, we draw the line of reflection which is y equals x. Then from here, we need to reflect the vertices of triangle A in the line y equals x. So for point A on the triangle, since we move 5 units to the right to touch the line of reflection, we also need to move 5 units downwards from the line of reflection to pin the new position of point A. We need to repeat the same process for points C and B on the triangle as well. When we are done, we are able to map out the reflected image of triangle A. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. When we look at triangles A and B, they have the same size but different orientations, which means the transformation is either a rotation or a reflection. When we rotate triangle A 90 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction, we get triangle B. Now we need to find the center of rotation. Since this is a 90 degree rotation, we find the center of rotation like this. We connect at least two corresponding points on triangles A and B. Then we draw the perpendicular bisectors of these lines. The intersection point of the bisectors is the center of rotation. In this case, we get 1, negative 1. And so the full description for this transformation will be rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise about the center 1, negative 1. Find the matrix that represents an enlargement, scale factor negative 2, center 0, 0. The enlargement matrix is in this format with the scale factor which is negative 2 in the major diagonal of the matrix. Calculate the determinant of the matrix in part CI. To get the determinant, we subtract the product of the minor diagonal which is 0 times 0 from the product of the major diagonal which is negative 2 times negative 2 which is 4. 4 minus 0 is 4. The diagram shows a hemispherical bowl of radius 5.6 cm and a cylindrical tin of height 10 cm. Show that the volume of the bowl is 368 cm3 correct to the nearest centimeter cubed. The volume of a hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere so we get 2 over 3 pi r cubed. We've been given the radius r of the hemisphere to be 5.6 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get 367.809 cm cubed, which is approximately 368 cm cubed rounded to the nearest cm cubed. The tin is completely full of soup. When all the soup is poured into the empty bowl, 80% of the volume of the bowl is filled. Calculate the radius of the tin. Since the tin is completely filled with the soup, the volume of the soup would be the same as the volume of the cylinder. 
So we can say that the volume of the cylinder is equal to 80% of the volume of the hemisphere. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. When we make r the subject of the equation, this is what we have. The volume of the hemisphere is 368 cm cubed and the height of the cylinder is 10 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get 3.06 centimeters, rounded to three significant figures. The diagram shows a cone with radius 1.75 cm and height 6 cm. Calculate the total surface area of the cone. The total surface area of the cone will be equal to the surface area of the curved surface, which is pi r l, plus the surface area of the circular base, which is pi r squared. We know the radius r is 1.75 cm. We need to find the slant height L of the cone. We can do this by applying the Pythagoras theorem. This gives us L squared equals 6 squared plus 1.75 squared. When we take square root of both sides, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 6.25. So now we plug in the values of R and L into the total surface area equation. When we type this into the calculator, we get 44.0 cm squared, rounded to three significant figures. The cone contains salt to a depth of 4.5 cm. The top layer of the salt forms a circle that is parallel to the base of the cone. Show that the volume of the salt inside the cone is 18.9 cm cubed, correct to one decimal place. The volume of the salt is equal to the volume of the cone, which we are referring to as the big cone, minus the volume of the small cone at the top. The formula for the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. In this case, RB and HB represent the radius and height of the big cone, and RS and HS represent the radius and height of the small cone. When we factor out 1 over 3 pi, this is what we have. RB is 1.75 cm and HB was given in the previous question as 6 cm. HS is 6 minus 4.5 cm, which is 1.5 cm. Since the small and big cones are similar, we can find RS using the fact that the ratio of their radii should be equal to the ratio of their heights. When we make RS the subject and plug in the values of HS, HB, and RB, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 0 0.4375. So now we plug in all the values into the equation for the volume of the salt. When we type this into the calculator, we get 18.94 cm cubed, which is approximately 18.9 cm cubed, rounded to one decimal place. The salt is removed from the cone at a constant rate of 200 mm cubed per second. Calculate the time taken for the cone to be completely emptied. Give your answer in seconds, correct to the nearest second. The time it will take for the cone to be completely emptied is equal to the volume of the salt divided by the rate at which the salt is removed from the cone. We found the volume of salt in the previous question to be 18.9 cm cubed and we've been given the rate of flow as 200 millimeters cubed to convert 18.9 cm cubed to millimeters cubed we multiply by a thousand when we type this into the calculator we get 94.5 seconds which is approximately 95 seconds rounded to the nearest second the diagram shows the graph of y equals f of x, where f of x equals x squared minus 2 over x minus 2, where x cannot be equal to 0. Use the graph to find f of 1. 
f of 1 is simply the y value of the graph when the x value is 1. So on the grid, when we map x equals 1 from the x-axis, we get y equals negative 3. Use the graph to find f of f of negative 2. First, we need to find f of negative 2, which is the y value of the graph when the x value is negative 2. So on the grid, when we map x equals negative 2 from the horizontal axis, we get y equals 3. So now that we know f of negative 2 is 3, we want to find f of 3, which is the y value when x is 3. So on the grid, when we map x equals 3 from the horizontal axis, we get y equals 6.3. On the grid opposite, draw a suitable straight line to solve the equation x squared minus 2 over x minus 7 equals minus 3x. For x is greater than and equal to negative 3 and less than and equal to 3. To determine the straight line we need to draw on the grid, we first need to rearrange the equation to leave the function of the curve on one side of the equation. Minus 7 can be rewritten as minus 2 minus 5. When we move minus 5 to the other side of the equation, it becomes plus 5. Notice how we now have the function of the curve on one side of the equation. This means the line we need to draw on the grid is y equals 5 minus 3x. After drawing the line y equals 5 minus 3x on the grid, we mark its intersection point with the curve and read the x coordinate of the points. For the first point, we have x equals negative 0.25 and for the other point, we have x equals 1.7. By drawing a suitable tangent, find an estimate of the gradient of the curve at x equals negative 2. On the grid, we draw a tangent to the curve at x equals negative 2. Then we pick two points on the tangent to estimate the gradient. In this case, we are using the points negative 2, 3 and 0, negative 4. When we plug in these coordinates into the gradient formula, we have m equals 3 minus negative 4 divided by negative 2 minus 0. When we type this into the calculator, we get negative 3.5. Complete the table for y equals g of x, where g of x equals 2 raised to the power negative x. For x is greater than and equal to negative 3 and less than and equal to 3. When we substitute x equals negative 3 into 2 raised to the power negative x, we get y equals 8. For x equals negative 2, we get y equals 4. And for x equals 2, we get y equals 0.25. On the grid opposite, draw the graph of y equals g of x. So on the grid, we plot all the points in the table and connect the points with a smooth line. Use your graph to find the positive solution to the equation f of x equals g of x. The solution to f of x equals g of x is simply the x coordinate of the intersection points between the two graphs. On the grid, we see that the graphs have two intersection points, one where x is negative and the other where x is positive. We are only interested in the positive solution and that is x equals 1.8. The table shows the time t seconds taken by each of 120 boys to solve a puzzle. Calculate an estimate of the mean time. The mean is equal to sigma f of x, the total sum of the time taken by all the boys to solve the puzzle, divided by sigma f, which is the total number of boys. Before getting sigma f of x, we need to get an average time for each of the time intervals. So for the first interval, the average time is 20 plus 30 divided by 2, which is 25. 
Then we have 30 plus 35 divided by 2, which is 32.5. 35 plus 40 divided by 2, which is 37.5. 40 plus 60 divided by 2, which is 50. 60 plus 100 divided by 2, which is 80. So for sigma f of x, we have 25 times 38 plus 32.5 times 27 plus 37.5 times 21 plus 50 times 16 plus 80 times 18 seconds divided by the number of boys, which is 120. When we type this into the calculator, we get 40.5 seconds rounded to three significant figures. On the grid, complete the histogram to show the information in the frequency table. To be able to draw the histogram, we need to calculate the frequency density for each of the given intervals. The frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the interval width. For the first interval, the frequency density is the frequency, which is 38, divided by the interval width, which is 30 minus 20, and this is equal to 3.8. This interval has already been drawn on the histogram for us. Then we have 27 divided by 35 minus 30, which is equal to 5.4. 21 divided by 40 minus 35, which is equal to 4.2. 16 divided by 60 minus 40, which is equal to 0 0.8. Then finally, 18 divided by 100 minus 60, which is equal to 0 0.45. So now, after marking all the different intervals on the horizontal axis of the grid, we can map out their heights using their frequency density values. A straight line joins the points A with coordinates negative 2, negative 3, and C with coordinates 1, 9. Find the equation of the line AC in the form y equals mx plus c. The equation of a straight line can be expressed in the form y equals mx plus c. We get the gradient m of the line by applying the gradient formula. This gives us negative 3 minus 9 divided by negative 2 minus 1, which is equal to 4. To get the value of c, we plug in the value of m and one set of coordinates. In this case, we are using 1, 9 into the equation. This gives us c equals 5. So now all we need to do is plug in the values of m and c into y equals mx plus c. This gives us y equals 4x plus 5. Calculate the acute angle between ac and the x-axis. On the diagram, we have labeled this angle as alpha. At the point where the line crosses the x-axis, the y-value is 5. And at the point where the line crosses the y-axis, the x-value is negative 1.25. So now, when we apply Sokatoa to the triangle, we have tan of alpha equals 5 over 1.25. When we make alpha the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we have 76.0 degrees rounded to one decimal place. A, B, C, D is a kite, where A, C is the longer diagonal of the kite. B is the point 3.52. Find the equation of the line B, D in the form y equals mx plus c. On the diagram, we have a rough sketch of a kite to help us understand how to find the equation of line B, D. B, D and A, C are perpendicular. This means the product of their gradients should be equal to negative 1. In part A, we found the gradient of AC as 4, and so the gradient of BD will be negative 1 over 4. To get the value of C, we plug in the value of M and the coordinate of B into the equation. This gives us C equals 23 over 8. So now all we need to do is place the values of M and C into Y equals MX plus C. This gives us Y equals negative 1 over 4X plus 23 over 8. 
The diagonals AC and BD intersect at negative 0.53. Work out the coordinates of D. The intersection point is the midpoint of BD. And so 3.5 plus the X coordinate of D divided by 2 should be equal to negative 0.5. When we make x the subject, we get negative 4.5. Then we have 2 plus the y coordinate of d divided by 2 should be equal to 3. When we make y the subject, we get 4. And so the coordinate of d would be negative 4.5, 4. Angelo has a bag containing three white counters and X black counters. He takes two counters at random from the bag without replacement. Complete the following statement. The probability that Angelo takes two black counters is X over X plus three times blank. The probability that the first counter he picks is black equals the number of black counters, which is x, divided by the total number of counters, which is x plus 3. The first black counter is not replaced, and so the pool reduces by 1. This means the probability that the second counter is black is x minus 1 divided by x plus 3 minus 1, which is x plus 2. The probability that Angelo takes two black counters is 7 over 15. Show that 4x squared minus 25x minus 21 equals 0. We've been given the probability that he picks two black counters as 7 over 15. And so all we need to do is equate x times x minus 1 divided by x plus 3 times x plus 2 to 7 over 15. For the numerator, when we expand x times x minus 1, we have x squared minus x. And for the denominator, when we expand x plus 3 times x plus 2, we get x squared plus 5x plus 6. When we cross multiply, this is what we get. When we expand the brackets on both sides of the equation, this is what we have. So now, when we move all the terms to one side of the equation and group like terms, we get 8x squared minus 50x minus 42 equals 0. When we divide through the equation by 2, we get 4x squared minus 25x minus 21 equals 0. Solve by factorization. 4x squared minus 25x minus 21 equals 0. We can rewrite minus 25x as minus 28x plus 3x. For the first two terms, when we factor out 4x, we are left with x minus 7. And for the final two terms, when we factor out 3, we are left with x minus 7. This can be rewritten as 4x plus 3 times x minus 7 equals 0. When we equate 4x plus 3 to 0, we have x equals negative 3 over 4. And when we equate x minus 7 to 0, we get x equals 7. Write down the number of black counters in the bag. In part B, we found two possible values for x. The value of x, which represents the number of black counters in the bag, cannot be negative, and so x is 7. Esme has a bag with 5 green counters and 4 red counters. She takes 3 counters at random from the bag without replacement. Work out the probability that the 3 counters are all the same color. There are two possibilities. She either takes 3 green counters or 3 red counters. The probability that the first counter she picks is green is equal to the number of green counters, which is 5, divided by the total number of counters, which is 9. Without replacement, the probability that the second counter she picks is green is 4 over 8. Without replacement, the probability that the third counter she picks is 3 over 7. The probability that the first counter she picks is red is equal to the number of red counters, which is 4, divided by the total number of counters, which is 9.
without replacements, the probability that the second counter she picks is red is 3 over 8. Without replacements, the probability that the third counter she picks is red is 2 over 7. When we type this into the calculator, we get 1 over 6. In the diagram, BC is a vertical wall standing on horizontal ground AB. D is the point on AB where AD equals 58 meters. The angle of elevation of C from A is 26 degrees. The angle of elevation of C from D is 72 degrees. Show that AC equals 76.7 meters correct to one decimal place. This angle here is the angle of elevation of C from A, which has been given as 26 degrees. This angle is the angle of elevation of C from D, which has been given as 72 degrees. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, and so when we subtract 72 degrees from 180 degrees, we get this angle as 108 degrees. All the angles in triangle ADC should add up to 180 degrees. And so when we subtract the sum of 26 degrees and 108 degrees from 180 degrees, we get this angle as 46 degrees. To get the length of AC, we can apply the sine rule. This gives us AC divided by sine 108 degrees equals 58 meters divided by sine 46 degrees. When we make AC the subject, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 76.683 meters, which is approximately 76.7 meters rounded to one decimal place. Calculate BD. BD is equal to AB minus AD. We already know AD is 58 meters. We can find AB by applying Sokatoa to triangle ABC. This gives us cos 26 degrees equals AB divided by 76.7 meters. When we make AB the subject, this is what we have. When we plug in the values of AB and AD into the equation for BD, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 10.9 meters rounded to three significant figures. Triangle EFG has an area of 70 meters squared. EF is to FG equals 1 is to 2 and angle EFG equals 40 degrees. Calculate EF. We are going to use this formula for the area of a triangle to get the length of EF. If we represent the length of EF with X, then based on the given ratio, FG will be 2 times X. We've been given the angle between EF and FG as 40 degrees and we also know the area of the triangle is 70 meters squared. And so when we plug in these values into the formula, this is what we have. Half times x times 2x is x squared. From here, when we make x the subject, this is what we get. When we type this into the calculator, we get 10.4 rounded to three significant figures. A different triangle, PQR, also has an area of 70 meters squared. PQ is to QR equals 1 is to 2 and PQ equals EF. Find angle PQR. From the illustration, we see that angle PQR is 180 degrees minus 40 degrees, which is equal to 140 degrees. Sine 40 degrees and sine 140 degrees return the same value. And so when we plug in the lengths of RQ, PQ and 140 degrees into the area, we still get 70 meters squared. Write down the next two terms of the sequence. The terms have a common difference of negative 4. When we subtract 4 from 7, we get 3. And when we subtract 4 from 3, we get negative 1. 
Find the nth term of this sequence. A sequence with a common difference can be expressed using this formula. A1 is the first term of the sequence, which is 19. D is the common difference, and that is negative 4. When we expand the brackets, negative 4 times n is negative 4n, and negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. 19 plus 4 is 23, and so our final answer is 23 minus 4n. Find the value of n when the nth term is negative 65. When we plug in this value into the nth term formula we found in part AII, we have negative 65 equals 23 minus 4n. When we simplify this and make n the subject, we have n equals 22. Another sequence has nth term 2n squared plus 5n minus 15. Find the difference between the fourth term and the fifth term of this sequence. All we need to do is subtract the fourth term of the sequence from the fifth term. To get the fifth term, we plug in n equals 5 into the nth term. And for the fourth term, we plug in n equals 4 into the nth term. When we type this into the calculator, we get 23. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.